Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I just hit my desk and had a little earthquake thing happen in here. Well, I hope you had an awesome day. Uh -oh, my computer is like doing that. That's kind of weird. I did have an awesome day. I worked on computers today, trying to get stuff off of them and create more memory on them. So I kind of worked on that most of the day. Did a little bit of laundry. Still need to put a little bit of laundry up, but overall, it's been a good day. A while ago, my son, our son was in there watching TV and he was just cackling. He just, he still is having a fit in there. He's watching the old Pink Panther movie clips clips of the old Pink Panther, not the one with Steve Martin, which I like those two, but this is uh, Peter Sellers that used to be play Pink Panther. Oh my goodness, he is loving all of that in there. Oh, you just never know what he's going to like. That's good, because I think he's seen all of VeggieTales and all of Phineas and Ferb, so he's kind of, he needs some new territory to watch. Well, um, it is so great that you are joining me tonight, and my topic tonight is Embrace Freedom. And I know we've been talking about freedom. I talked about freedom last week, uh, or last Sunday on July the 4th, but I'm looking at all these countries that do not have freedom, and I feel so bad for them because we do right now. And so that's part of my deal is embrace freedom because we could be them. You know, we could very easily be them. So I wanna pray for them. I wanna pray for the people from the countries, not the governments because they are the ones that oppress the people and keep them from having the things that they need. Sometimes as easy of a need as food and water so we need to pray for these people that God will send people to liberate them. They need liberty. So I thought we'd talk about that. I've, I have the Constitution. We're not going to read the whole Constitution. But we're going to read the Declaration of Independence. And it's going to be very eye-opening for you, as it has been for me, to learn that the people have the power in countries. The government does not have the power. The people have the power. And that is how the Declaration of Independence was written, is for us to maintain the power. And then on a deeper level, Jesus gives us freedom. He frees us from uh, our bondage of sin. He frees us from he gives us joy so we don't have to be stuck in sadness, you know. Uh, we're going to talk about Jesus too. Because every time I get on here, I want to talk about Jesus. And I want to do a salvation message every time I come on. Those are my, my goals. To share something. To share something with you that I'm either dealing with or that God has put on my heart. Because in 2018, God called me out of my job and into service to him. And part of that is he wants me to deliver his truth. And he wants me to share the gospel of Jesus. So that's what I try to do. That's why I'm here. Um, this has been my ministry for a long time before I even started it. I had this awesome treasures I used to just do on YouTube. I would just do lyric videos to songs that I like and songs that I was trying to learn to sing at church, and then I would share them on YouTube. But I'm not seeking popularity. I don't care how many people come and watch. That doesn't matter to me. I'm seeking being obedient to God and obedient to his calling. I have this piece of hair that's like, it missed the ponytail. 
And so this is kind of like my summer hairdo. So every day that it's hot like this, whether it's clean or dirty, my hair may be in a ponytail because that's just kind of how I roll during the summer. And that's kind of why I want it just a little bit longer so I can keep it up off my neck. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you for freedom, God. We know that it comes from you. We know that you sent it through Jesus. God, you are on your throne and you are in control and you are sovereign over everything that's going on. God, you see these people in these other countries that are hurting God. You see their pain. Many of them cry out to you for freedom, God. God, we just thank you that you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. God, excuse me. God, we just praise you and thank you because you are magnificent and mighty and powerful. God, you are also our shelter in the storm and you are our strength and our refuge. And you are everything, God. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge unrighteousness, all unrighteousness, God. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God. You are trustworthy. You are faithful. You are patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to return to you, to repent, to um, have their re relationship reconciled with you. God, we just pray for forgiveness we pray for you to forgive our land, God. We do, even in our country, we do so many things against you, God. We pray that you would forgive us. God, we pray for all these countries. We pray for Cuba, who are in unrest. They want liberty, God. They want freedom. They are carrying their flags, and they are carrying our flags because we are the symbol of freedom that they seek. God, we just pray that these government officials would see the needs of their people, would see the pain of their people, and that they would tend to their needs, that they would give them freedom, God, that Cuba would be free for once. God, it's always been communistic, and it is not working. Communism does not work. Socialism does not work. Time after time over history, it has been proven it does not work. God, we just pray for liberty for Cuba. We pray for the people in Florida that are protesting on behalf of Cuba, God. We just pray that they wouldn't block the traffic, God. That they would peacefully protest on behalf of many of their family members that are still in Cuba, that are still in bondage to communism. God, we pray for South Africa. We lift them up to you. Many, many have been hurt. Many have been killed. God, we just pray for their liberty too. We pray for a good government to go in there and take over. We pray for overturns of these governments, God, if they are not going to serve their people, that they would be overturned. God, we pray for Haiti. We don't know what happened in Haiti, but their president got assassinated, maybe by some of our people. God, we just pray for these people in Haiti, God, that you would be with them, that you would protect them from other countries that would want to come in and overtake them at this time of weakness in their country, God. We pray for good governments that will work for the people. We pray for governments that will realize that their government belongs to the people, that it is the will of the people 
and not the government. That we elected the government to serve us and not us to serve them. God, we just pray for Florida who is still recovering bodies. God, we just pray that all bodies would be recovered, that you would be with these family members, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength and all these government officials, God. About the time that this ended, then the thing in Cuba started, which does affect Florida, God, we pray for those officials too. We pray for all the volunteers that have come to help in this building collapse, God. We just pray for blessings for them. God, we also pray for two more countries that I heard about today. We pray for France and we pray for Greece, God. I don't know what the what is going on there, but people have taken to the streets, God. We just pray for them. We pray for those people to be safe and that if their governments are not taking care of their needs like they are supposed to, that God, those governments would be overturned. God, governments are so corrupt and so power hungry and they want to tell everyone what to do. Communism does not work. Socialism does not work. In America, everyone has the same opportunity to go and be a success at what they choose to do, but they do have to work hard, God. They do have to work hard. You want us to work hard at whatever you've called us to do. We can't just sit back and take a government check and expect to be successful. We have to put the work in. God, we just pray. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength, God, for them. I pray for my friends that are sick, God. I just pray for healing. I pray for a speedy recovery. If they need miraculous healing, I pray for miraculous healing, God. God, I just thank you again that we can come and we can lay all these things before your feet, God. But you will attend to them according to your will and your way and your perfect timing and your perfect will. And we respect that, God. We trust you with everything we have. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, that was a really long prayer. Got some things out in the open that I was thinking, though. Okay, I'm going to read to you what... Um, song that I shared today which is called Freedom and I really love this song and I think I shared it not too long ago because I love it so much um, I love this song and message by Jesus Culture and Kim Walker Smith sings it and she does an awesome job and uh, I love New Song Cafe so I sent a combination be sure and go and listen if you haven't already I love the lyrics and the upbeat music of this song. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. My words today embrace, embrace freedom. I guess why I am thinking about freedom. I guess why I am thinking about freedom is that many countries do not have freedom. And if we are not careful and do not stand up for our rights, we will be without freedom too. Right now, today, five countries are crying out for freedom against their governments. Cuba, South Africa, Haiti, France, and Greece. I'm not so sure about France and Greece, what their thing is about, but more than likely it is. Many governments want to be in total power. They do, and they, they skim off of the people. They make extra money off of the people aside from taxes and use their corruption for their gain, not the people. Please pray for these people that every day do not live in freedom. We are so blessed here and we really do take it for granted too. We really do. We take our freedoms from granted, for granted. I pray we never have to take to the streets to demand our freedom. That is my prayer, that we never have to know what that's like 
to have to take to the streets because you have no food, you have no water, you have no electricity. They're pulling people, you're, they're pulling your kids out of your house and making them go into their military. That's how bad it is in Cuba. They are pulling out the youth boys out of their houses and making them join the military. I see government slowly heading in that direction of socialism and communism. That's what all the equity and all the all the stuff is about that we're hearing. It is slowly going towards communism and socialism, which historically these principles have failed over and over. And us repeating it again is not going to make it a success because God is against this. And if God is against it, it's not going to work. I pray we get to keep our freedoms that so many brave service people have given their lives for and our beloved veterans also. And the very people that are fighting for our freedoms today that very, very likely will be deployed to Cuba, will be deployed to South Africa, will be deployed to Haiti, will be deployed to France and Greece to help, to help keep peace. So Jesus gives us freedom and wants us to come as we are to him to be set free. Part of that song that I like so well is come as you are. Come as you are. Don't wait for your life to get cleaned up because it is never going to get cleaned up. Let Jesus do it. Come to Jesus and let him do it. True freedom comes from God through Jesus. Is Jesus your Savior? If not, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved now. Embrace freedom. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21 Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay. So that is my song share. Let's look up some scriptures. And then, like I said, we're going to read this. We're going to read the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, we're going to do it last. We're going to do the scriptures first. Okay, so in Galatians 5, 1. All of these that I found were in the New Testament. Okay, I may read quite a bit of it because 513 is another one about freedom. It says liberty, but liberty is freedom. I can't find the word freedom too many times in the Bible. I can find liberty. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Sin is bondage, y'all. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. 
And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's what Jesus said to do too. So our freedom is found in Jesus. So 2 Corinthians, I think I'm going back. 2 Corinthians 3.17 is the picture that I put, is, are the lyrics in that song. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So wherever Jesus is, there is freedom. And like true freedom, well, it says liberty. My Bible says liberty again. There is liberty. All right, John eight thirty-two. I guess I'm going backwards is what I'm doing. 8, 32 through 36 says this. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Now sayest thou, ye shall be made free. And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. That is bondage. Servant, servanthood is bondage. Bondage to sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I love that. I have a plaque somewhere. Not in here, I guess. I think it's... I don't know where it is. So through Jesus, we're free. We get our freedom through Jesus. Okay, Romans 8. Yeah, I'm going back in the other direction. Romans 8, 2. And that's the last one we're going to look at. I'm sure there are many more. If you can think of one that you like about freedom, then please put it in the comments. Put anything in the comments. He that spared not his own son, but delivered... Oh, wait, that's 32. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So again, we're free through Jesus. Oh, here comes my comes my commentator. Well, hello. Oh, you brought me the remote. Well, you're here in time to hear the Declaration of Independence. You might learn something. Okay? You're going to have to wait a little bit. Okay, so this is the Declaration of Independence. And so this is a little bob, a little book that one of my bosses gave me from the promise. And when he gave it to me, I thought, oh, I'm not ever going to read that. But since some things have been happening in our government, I have become more interested in what really the Declaration of Independence says. So... I am going to read, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read down to the parts that I think are really good, and that really state what I said will go, that the people are the ones that have the power, not the government. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. 
and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. All men. All men. This did not divide up races. It says all men are created equal. And they are endowed by their creator, God, with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers, their powers from the consent of of the governed. Do you know who the governed is? The governed is we the people. We are the ones that give the government their powers. <clears throat> they get their powers from us. All of this is very enlightening because I don't remember learning this in school. Maybe I should have paid better attention. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, that when the government is not doing what we ask them to do, we the people ask them to do, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. So we can alter, we can go in and go, hey, if you're not representing us. How we do it normally is we vote people out. There's a lot of people in our government that need to be voted out. They've been in there way too long. They have overstayed their welcome. All right. Abolish it and to institute new government. Laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem mo most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So our government is not our dictator. Our government works for us. Our government was elected by us. And so when our government is not doing what we the people want, and 88% of the people in this country polled wants voter ID. So why is our government working so hard against that? And why is that so hard? When people that fly, people that go and buy alcohol, people that go and buy cigarettes have to show an ID. Why is it so hard for somebody to have an ID to go and vote? We, the people, have the power. We, the people, are going to have to maintain our freedom. We have servicemen that maintain our freedom outside of our borders. We're going to have to maintain our freedom inside of our borders. We're going to have to stand up to the government. We're going to have to vote these people out. They have been in for so long. They don't care about us. They're about what's good for them. And I'm not calling out either side because God has shared with me that there are a lot on both sides that are not right. That are like these corrupt other governments mm -hmm. like Cuba are siphoning mm -hmm. off the top our tax money that is supposed to take care of our country they're sending it to other countries and not to help them because they need food to help them do studies about stupid things I mean listen to Rand Paul sometimes give you a list of all the things 
that our government foolishly spends our tax dollars on. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right there. And I'm not going to say much more because I'm going to do a salvation message. But I just wanted to enlighten some people because I've been enlightened by Dave Jose. Dave Cares. He's on YouTube. He has read the constitutions of most of the states. And he has gone through and seen how the government has taken advantage of we the people. We the people. We the people. We have the power. So don't ever forget that. Don't let anybody tell you that the government has all the power. We have the power. These guys that signed this Declaration of Independence, they wanted us to have freedom. They, a lot of this is based on God and God's laws and God's values and God's moral values. I'm going to read it one of these days. But I just wanted to share that with you tonight. I don't I felt like God wanted me to share that with you tonight. So now let's do a salvation message. That's really tiny. I think I need some big print ones. How about this one? Steps to peace with God. All right. Steps to Peace with God. That's what I'm going to read. Uh, goodnewstracks.org My child is over there verbalizing. That's good. I'm praying for him to speak. He said chocolate pudding today. I'm quite proud. Steps to Peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exciting this life without being on good terms? Exiting, not ex <laughs> not exciting, but exiting this life. I crack myself up. I can't read sometimes. Exiting this life without being on good terms with him. Yeah, who would want to leave this world without being on good terms with God? That's a scary thought. Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God. But the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understanding God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have? So step two is admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to obey God and go their own willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14.12 your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. 
Isaiah 59 2. No bridge reaches God except for one. Step three. Mm -hmm. Discover God's bridge, mm -hmm. the cross. Jesus Christ died mm -hmm. on the cross and rose from the grave. Mm -hmm. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, mm -hmm. took our place and paid the penalty for our mm -hmm. sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ yeah. Jesus, 1 Timothy 2, 5. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, 1 Peter three eighteen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8. Romans 6, 23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life. But each person must make a choice. Oh, So step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Hey, tone it down a little bit. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Revelation 3.20 I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 3, 36. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in Him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that the only way, the only way to find peace, the Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. So we admit... Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So I'm going to say this prayer, and I'm going to leave a space if you would like to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you... Oh, I'm sorry, I did not do that. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, I pray. You said that prayer and you invited Jesus into your life. You accepted his forgiveness. Then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. I'm sorry I keep slouching down and then I have to sit up and then I have to slouch down. Um, your name is now I mean you are now saved, sealed and sanctified by God through Jesus his son 
And you know the rapture is soon. So we need to embrace freedom here while we have it. And then we will have freedom forever when we get to heaven. There will be nothing, nobody that interrupts our freedom in heaven. No one. So let me give you God's blessing. And I'll pray again and we will get off of here. Number 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We need peace. We need freedom. We have freedom here. We need to pray for those that do not have freedom. We need to pray for them. All right, let's pray. I already prayed for them once, so I'm just going to pray a generic prayer for all of you, anybody that comes to watch. God, I just thank you that we do have freedom and that that freedom comes through your son, Jesus, who is willing to come and die for all of us, God. And then you raised him from the dead, God. And now we have, we have the opportunity to receive Jesus as our Savior and to have eternal freedom and to have even freedom while we're here. God, I just pray for all the families that you would bless them, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them. That if there's any, any that come here and watch this, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. <sighs> that the preamble of the Declaration of Independence, God, would enlighten people. That it would show them the truth. God, I just pray that you would continue to protect us. That you would give us the boldness that we need to go forward to share your truths and share the gospel, God. That we would want to be in your presence, God. That we would want to testify of the good things that you have done in our lives. And that we would use that testimony to encourage others. God, we're just so thankful. We're so thankful that you are our God. We're so thankful that Jesus is our Savior. And we are so thankful to have the Holy Spirit that guides yeah. us, gives us discernment, <laughs> conviction, confirmation, yeah. God, and so much more. <clears throat> God, we just pray that you would um, bless us with a good rest of the night. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Well, my pray and share warriors, as you can tell, my son is over there. I need to go feed him. And uh, his name is Seth. Seth means granted. We prayed for Seth. He was granted to us through our prayers. He's had a very, very extensive medical history since he's been here. But God is faithful. And God healed him from leukemia when he was six and he is still in remission because God is good and he's going to be 18 next month I can't believe it I can't believe it but he is so God is good never never doubt the goodness the faithfulness of God he keeps all of his promises alright Well, God bless all of you and your families. Have an awesome rest of the night. And an awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. And much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.